Michael, we're here now. It's close to high tide in Dublin. But what can we expect now from sea level rise within this century? Well, there's some uncertainty because we don't know uh, all of the details that we'd like to know at this point. Uh, but within that range of uncertainty, there are credible estimates that we could see uh, close to two meters, as much as two meters of sea level rise by the end of the century if we continue on the course that we're on with business as usual fossil fuel emissions. And uh, two meters of uh, sea level would obviously uh, flood this area at high tide. Absolutely, and flood probably most of the centre part of Dublin City and right. other cities in Ireland and That's around right. the coast. But with storm surges, are we, can we expect bigger storm surges than what we're now experiencing? Well, there, there is some evidence for that. And of course, uh, Ireland recently has uh, seen some uh, major storms that have come with extremely uh, large uh, tidal surges. Um, there uh, is evidence that uh, the extratropical storms that influence uh, Ireland, that influence North America, where I live, uh, may be getting stronger because of climate change. Uh, tropical storms, hurricanes, uh, are getting stronger because of climate change. And so in addition to that, uh, that, that slow rise in sea level, on top of that, uh, we are likely to see stronger uh, storms with uh, larger surges. Um, and that's sort of a, a double whammy. The combination of stronger storms and sea level rise is a real threat to our coastlines here in Ireland, uh, on the east coast of the US where I live, and around the world. And most of our towns and cities are on rivers, and a lot of those are close to the coast and low-lying. Can we expect more flooding from more extreme rainfall? Is that a big issue that we should be preparing for? Yes, and again, there's always uncertainty, but uncertainty isn't our friend, because uh, uncertainty means that the projections uh, may be worse than we are currently uh, estimating uh, when it comes to uh, things like uh, rainfall changes, changes in rainfall. Uh, the climate models show that we are likely to see an increase in uh, rainfall, uh, particularly in the winter um, in this region of the world. And so, again, you've got the combination of sea level rise, um, stronger storms uh, leading to stronger uh, uh, coastal surges, uh, and on top of that, uh, potential increases in rainfall, um, uh, a sort of triple threat. Those three ingredients could potentially come together to give a far, uh, a far worse uh, flooding uh, problem here in Dublin. And in preparing for this and coping with what's coming down the track, you know, will we be able to defend ourselves? You know, right across the planet, not just here in Ireland, are we going to be able to defend ourselves? So many cities around the world in low-lying areas. We saw what happened with Hurricane Sandy in New York. These sort of issues, you know, are we going to see more and more of this? Yeah, and, and it, you know, Hurricane Sandy is a very good example of the sort of thing that is very rare right now. Um, it was a hundred year storm uh, that, uh, that impacted uh, the east coast of the U.S. where I live. Um, and yet that sort of storm is predicted to become a one in three year storm. Uh, because of global warming and climate change. Uh, there is a certain amount of climate change, uh, warming of the earth, rising of sea level that's already locked in, that we can't do anything about. It's in the pipeline simply because of the, the carbon that we've emitted into the atmosphere thus far. And uh, that may be enough to give us more than a meter of sea level rise alone, uh, which again would uh, come close uh, to, to flooding this area at high tide. Um, we can still prevent the worst of those changes from happening. Um, so when it comes to dealing with climate change, sometimes you hear the discussion of solutions um, sort of break down in a, a, along a somewhat artificial boundary that we either have to adapt or mitigate, uh, reduce our emissions. Um, we have to do both. We are already committed to a certain amount of climate change, a certain amount of sea level rise, and we are going to need to adapt to that. We're going to need to build coastal defenses in low-lying um, uh, regions, coastal regions like Dublin. Uh, we're going to need to build infrastructure uh, to guard against increasingly damaging uh, coastal surges. Um, but we can prevent what would truly be catastrophic climate change, uh, the sort of climate change that would lead to a, an inundation of cities like Dublin. There's still time to prevent that from happening. Um, but the only way we're going to do that is by reducing our carbon emissions. And so any real solution to the problem is 
has to be two-pronged. Uh, we do need to do, engage in some level of adaptation, but we also need to do everything we can to mitigate, to lower our carbon emissions. Some economists are saying, of course, that if we mitigate and wean off fossil fuel and put high carbon taxes on fossil fuel to do that, we'll bankrupt our economy. What do you say about that? Yeah, the, the economists that I talk to um, uh, are saying something very different. Uh, if you talk to uh, economists like uh, William Nordhaus of Yale University in the U.S., who's considered uh, perhaps the leading economist when it comes to looking at sort of the cost-benefit analysis of dealing with climate change, what he'll tell you is that the cost of inaction, the damages that climate change will do, uh, greatly outweigh any cost of taking action. In fact, that's true right now. Uh, we know that climate change related uh, damages are already costing more than a trillion dollars in a global domestic product, a um, uh, trillion dollars a year. And the cost of mitigating climate change is quite a bit less than that. So already the damage that climate change is doing is greater than any uh, cost of taking action. And that just will become more and more true as if we continue to delay taking action. Um, the good news is that um, we can actually grow the economy and solve this problem at the same time. Uh, economists will also tell you that if we undergo a transition to sort of a new energy system where we incentivize green energy, renewable energy, um, we, uh, it, you know, we, 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 we uh, invest money in technical innovation that will help us solve this problem. We're going to grow the economy and we're going to do something about the climate change problem at the same time. So the truth is we can do both. We can grow the economy um, and of course Ireland is a great example. is one of the, the fastest growing economies um, in, in the world, uh, certainly in the EU. I believe uh, Ireland is uh, the fastest growing economy in the European Union. And it also has among the highest uh, per capita greenhouse gas emissions of uh, uh, the, the various countries. Uh, and so Ireland is a good example of where uh, you, know, you can continue to grow the economy, but you can also make uh, significant progress in lowering this, the, these greenhouse gas emissions that are contributing to climate change.